Father, we look at your word and we realize that Paul told us in Hebrews 12 that we were not to turn from him, from heaven, who speaks in this last hour. And this is one thing we are not doing, at least as concerning, that we want to hear what he has to say. We only pray you'll anoint us, Lord, so that we can really hear what you are saying and understand it and be part of it, that it might nurture us, it might be our life. We know without that, Lord, we do, according to what we see and understand, there is nothing for us but condemnation, even as Paul said in Hebrews 6. But we take a heart, Lord, that that which is seen at our time for us is uh, not burning, but the herbs coming forth uh, from the earth, dressed in meat from which was a required. So, Father, we pray now that we'll understand what has been given us this last hour. Be meat to our souls. It be our very life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Now, we're over here in number 10 of Easter Seal. And in the ninth exposition of the Easter Seal, we found Brother Branham taking us back to the vindicated ministry of Christ where he set forth that the Pharisees knew that no man could do those manifested works unless God was with him. In other words, they recognized God had to be present, God doing what he was doing because nobody else could do it. They also knew that such vindication foreran the word of God. That's according to Hebrews 18. They knew that specifically, although perhaps they did not want to agree to what their forefathers had set forth, and God had sanctioned. Of course, God was in the forefathers <clears throat> asking for that. And it was their reception or recognition of Christ's message that manifested who they were, if they were children of God or if they were not children of God. Now, you'll notice that that also goes back to Deuteronomy 18, because one coming with that ministry prior to the word, vindicating the ministry of the word, would certainly set them forth as to exactly what side of the fence they were on, whether they were going to go over on God's side or stay on the other side, fully declaring who they were. Now, you'll notice that both seed, that is the time of Christ, there were those that were the absolutely pronounced serpent seed, uh, unbelievers like Cain, uh, both the true seed and the uh, seed of Cain claim parentage of God by Abraham, their father. And Jesus said, well, it's certainly true that uh, Abraham's seed you are, but you are not his children. And, of course, you can take that back to uh, the book of Genesis, that Eve was the mother of all, but uh, Adam was certainly not the father of all. You can see how the Bible dovetails with the very word, <coughs> experiences in it, all these things set forth. Now, the resurrection which proved itself out at Pentecost. Remember, Jesus was seen above 500, about 500 for 40 days. But at Pentecost, there was another a uh, manifestation that absolutely vindicated the death of Jesus Christ, even though the multitudes had not seen him. So the resurrection which proved itself out at Pentecost also determined <clears throat> whose God's children really were. That set the stage for the separation. And you'll notice that right today in Scripture it says that except you have the Spirit of Christ, you are none of his and again, it says you're reprobate without the Spirit of Christ. Now, that can be taken in various ways. First of all, if you are going to be a child of God, you would have to have the Spirit of God himself, which is the life of God in you. And then, of course, because there's just one lump, you'd have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost to actually uh, designate your separate unto God by being his true child. Uh, so, all right, now, and Brother Branham in this resurrection hour asks his congregation whether they are, where they are at concerning the principle of truth. That is, this principle 
that the resurrection uh, actually <clears throat> manifests, that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost at the resurrection of Christ, actually manifests the difference. Because if they do not have the Spirit of Christ, that's a true genuine baptism, uh, then they are not children. And then, of course, in this hour when the Spirit is falling upon anybody and everybody, the anointing, then, of course, Brother Branham takes us to the infallible evidence, and that is the revealed word of the hour. Now, remember, during the church ages and going back after the first church age, Brother Branham said, well, you know, it was all right back there to join the church, and uh, uh, you got by, <clears throat> and uh, you were in a position then that uh, you could say you're a child of God, and uh, there was nothing too definitive. But in this end time, it becomes very, very definitive. There is a real strict line of demarcation, which was never there before. Now, you'll hear him bring this out as we read some paragraphs. He won't bring it out quite that way. But you'll see how he's dealing with organization and so on. Now, before we begin reading where we quit, in which we start at paragraph 119 on page 23, I want to just <clears throat> go back and uh, uh, read maybe at uh, 116. 115, he said they knew he was a teacher come from God. They, they placed him. They had to know that this man was an authority. authority. Then he says in, in 116, I wonder today where we are at. Now, remember... He is talking about Easter, and he equates Easter to the resurrection, and he equates the resurrection to the Holy Spirit. And remember, at the time of Pentecost, the pillar of fire came back God himself. And then the little licks came from the body. God in the pillar of fire. Jesus was the Jehovah's Savior come back in the form of the Holy Spirit, and the pillar of fire was right there. So this is what you are looking at, and what you must always remember, and don't get your minds on anything else. Where are we at? I ask you, where is the resurrection finding us? Now, <clears throat> you are already then, if you really believe, and this actually was preached before uh, December the 4th, 1965, which sermon I'm referring to, the conditions of the rapture, uh, <clears throat> actually, whether people knew it or not, the message had gone forth, uh, which was the shout, and now they were in the presence of the resurrection because the one who came down was already known as the way, the truth, and the life and uh, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead. And also he is known as the groom, uh, the head of the church. So when you see that, you see it all at this particular time of 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Now, he said, uh, where is the resurrection finding us? Do you dare to step out? Do you dare to take God at his word? Now, <clears throat> instantly, you can go to the thinking of the active faith. Will I take God at his word? Will I step up? Will I get converted? Will I be healed? Will I do this? Will I do that? Now, that's very good, and we appreciate that. But this is the problem of the anointing at the end time. These people that are false with the true anointing have all manner of fruit, in all manner of manifestation, and it still said, I never knew you, depart from me. So where are you going to place this if you're simply going to say, well, all right, this is a call to active faith. Well, if you take it as a call to active faith, instead of the basic <coughs> passive faith, which is the doctrine, you can end up on the top of the totem pole as perhaps the greatest producer and end up as the lower position in hell. Now you just, now come on. So when you, read, when you hear what he's saying here, you got to stop and think. See, what is this man's message? What is his obligation? <clears throat> what is he here for? Now, he's talking in terms 
of which no other man can talk. He is saying this is the hour of the resurrection. He's talking with authority. Now, is it baloney, even gold-plated, or is it the true meat of God? Now, you've got to make up your mind. You see why I talk this way? Because you, you've got to know where it's coming from and to whom it is going. <clears throat> now, he said, How do you dare to take God at his word? What word? So I will take God at his word. That's passive. Now, just a minute. Can you take God at his vindicative, passive word? Now, that's the tough one. See, because now you're going to get to the place where any, everybody else is a heretic. The rest are not worshipers in spirit and in truth. And when you set that line, hey, you're going to be hated. They're going to say every rotten thing about you, and yet they themselves take to themselves, arrogate to themselves, the same position that you stand and you're vindicated by believing the perfect faith that has been revealed to us. You can't win as far as they're concerned. So don't think for one minute anybody's going to believe you and you're going to be somebody, hogwash. <clears throat> The difference today, the showdown, as it was in the time of Moses, but particularly in Elijah, which was uh, Moses Sinai, Elijah Carmel, today is Mount Zion, to which we are approaching. And you'll be out of here, and no one will even know it. So if they don't know it then, they aren't going to know it now. <clears throat> All right. Now watch. If you're ordained to life, you sure will do it. If you're an eagle, you can't help doing it. There is something in you. Now, every time he talks about the eagle, it's the eagle scream. <clears throat> the mother eagle screaming for the egg that was mislaid, but there's an eagle there somewhere. So what you're looking at then is the prophetic message the last eagle of Revelation flying in the heavens and screaming and bringing in the bride, which is the message gathering us, preparatory to the resurrection, which in turn will evoke a call together, which will take us up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> All right. Now, do you want to just serve a creed somewhere and say, I go to church, I'm just as good as you are. Now, there you're getting into your active faith. What part of the word makes you act and how do you act? If you hold those birthrights, <clears throat> that's the creed and the dogma, you'll never see it, you can't see it, but if you do hold to the possession of this birthright, you can't help from seeing it because it's a part of you and you are a part of it. Now, you're looking right back where I took you the time before in Galatians 4. You've got the two churches, one of the earthly and one of the heavenly, and they have two mothers. <clears throat> one is Hagar, which genders to bondage, and one is Sarah, which had the promise of the free son. And you notice this one had to come forth in her resurrection hour because both he and she were completely resurrected, changed in their members. And that, what, that is what brought the, son, the promised son to earth. Now, he was always there in spirit. <clears throat> but now he's brought to earth as she brings him forth. And Brother Branagh said, the church cannot possibly bring forth Christ in the condition which it's in. So how are you going to do it in condition? You're going to have to get it exactly the way God wants it, which would be a complete dependency upon God and the full assurance of faith which brings us to perfect faith, which means it's vindicated. Abraham never came to perfect faith even after 25 years, the full assurance, except what God did for him, and God appeared and stood before the tent with Sarah in the tent, and God's back to the tent, 
And he said, you're going to, Sarah's going to have a son by you this time next year. And Sarah said, ha, 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 me and who else? He said, why did you laugh? Well, she said, I didn't laugh. She got scared now. He mean to tell me that this would have, Abraham would have got to this place except without this divine intervention presentation? You can't do it. And you've got to see what you're dealing with. And the Bible runs in types all the way through. And the Bible doesn't just runs in, run in types. <clears throat> it runs in actuality. How can I deny the mother that gave me birth? How can you deny New Jerusalem? Well, now look at here. We, what, we looked at that. Now, I, wonder, I don't know if you caught what I was aiming at, <clears throat> but I, I, I'll go over it again so you'll know what I'm talking about. Here it is right here. Now, <clears throat> the allegory <clears throat> was concerning Hagar, which tended to Mount, to Mount Sinai, and we're looking at Sarah, who is Mount Zion. Now, under Mount Sinai, you have your condemnation, thunder, lightning, blacking out in condemnation, this and that and the other thing. <clears throat> now remember, <clears throat> before there can be a prophet to bring a message, he must be vindicated. Now, look at in the 12th chapter, and it says here, but you are coming, verse 22, to Mount Zion. You are not come to that other place. <clears throat> you are come to Mount Zion. Now, what was at Sinai? A prophet. Now, remember, I don't care how much thunder and lightning there was. It doesn't matter because God was not speaking to the people. He was merely manifesting. So he had to have a man that was vindicated to prove that he had a right to the manifestation. You follow me? I said, this is as simple as ABC, and it's right in this hour. And if you don't get the fundamentals, you are not going to get ahead with this message because your faith depends upon it. Live, die, sink, or swim. <clears throat> now, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, an innumerable company of angels, messengers. Now listen, was not Sinai at that time occupied by the living God? Absolutely. The same living God, but this is different. You follow me? The other was unto manifested judgment. But this is unto manifested deliverance. See? Same God. <clears throat> now, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and the saints of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Now he's talking about speaking. <clears throat> on Mount Sinai, there's voices and rumblings and thunderings and speaking, and they had a prophet. Now we got Abel speaking, and we got it by the blood. So now you've got the interposition of the blood, so there's no rumblings in, at Mount Sinai, so there's no condemnation. You are approaching the heavenly city, and you're going to be a part of it, or you can't approach. Now watch. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. <clears throat> what is the key then to the end time? Somebody speaking. And of course, everybody's, well, bless God, we got the Bible and our church speaks. Our Bible uses the word. So does 800 other churches and denominations. And you're all different. So which one of you has got God? Don't try to tell me because you think nice thoughts and go home and you are at rest and you do little rabbity tricks and things. That's God. Hogwash. You give me, thus saith the Lord, stand right here and show me. If you're not a prophet, drop dead. I got as much right as you got any day in the week and maybe ten times more. So this is hogwash. <clears throat> now, if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall they not they won't escape if they turn from him, not that speaketh, but it is from heaven. You know he's going to speak, but who comes down from heaven? The Lord himself shall descend with the shout. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, Revelation 10 and 1. Right in there, all the way through, you can see it. <clears throat> Whose voice then shook the earth, big earthquake. But now it promising, yet once more I shake not earth only, but also heaven. Now who did that? That was Jesus. So who's going to do it again? It tells you. 
you come to Mount Zion, to the city living God, to Jerusalem, and to God, the judge of all men, and to Jesus, the mediator. <clears throat> In other words, as God stands here as the perfect judge, you've got mediation. You've got help. Everything is grace. Now, he's going to shake everything down that can be shaken. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Now, it tells you flat the shaking down, the dissolution is necessary to put you in the millennium because you and what is here now are entirely different. <clears throat> no more trial and error. No more this, no more that. You're coming now to the, cult to the culmination. So now you've got a short period of sanctification for a thousand years. Therefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. What kingdom cannot be moved? The Bible starts in the kingdom of the Garden of Eden. It got moved. Eden was God's headquarters. It got moved. This time it isn't going to get moved. Satan will, will attack it on earth. The, <clears throat> the heavenly encampment. God's just going to blast him and he's hiding the whole bunch into the lake of fire. You're, you're, you're at the end time here. Now, this man is telling us this thing. This is resurrection. It is going on now <clears throat> because the shout has already transpired. You've got to put all this together. Everything you know from his message, like the Bible, you put it together. See, you can't leave out anything. You bring it in there. Now, he said, you... Uh, how could I deny the mother gave me birth? How can I not deny I've approached to New Jerusalem? <clears throat> Zion, my mother, Sarah. How can I divide, uh, deny the father's blood that's in me? How can I deny Charles Branham from being my father? I could not do it. I'm willing to stand his reproach or anything else because I'm his son. Hallelujah. Then being the son of God, and he was the word of God, which is the Logos, the complete manifestation. How could I deny that Bible being truth that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever? Well, I can deny it very easily. <clears throat> I've never seen anything to prove he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, a lot of you people are not as old as I am, but you know one time I could run pretty fast, and I could run a long time. And my wife was known as the deer. She could run so fast. She's the best runner in school. Let her run now. I'd like to see her do what she did as a kid. She talked about riding a horse. She still, she don't, she still, I laugh at her because she's like a little kid glamorizing about the riding on the horse and the horse jump over the fence and she was like, like a hunk of butter on the horse. Try it now. Well, she couldn't get on a horse. Well, she'd make a good attempt because she's got guts. <laughs> Whoop that church, that horse on the rump and see how she stays on. Said, I'm trying to tell you, there's no proof that she ever could do that. So she's not Allison Vail the same yesterday, a day and forever. In fact, she's worse shaped than she was a few weeks ago. Now her last four teeth are gone. I'm in the same boat. So a person come along here, talk about resurrection, tell all these things and say, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's just one word, hogwash, unless you prove it. <clears throat> just quoting Hebrews 13 and 8. That doesn't do anything. No book can prove a book. It's got to be sound, like two and two make four, and the Pythagorean theorem. And the laws of parallel structure and the science of physics. Get out there in nature. You can prove that. But you can't prove this book unless there's a life there that comes out. Amen. So he says right here, Hebrews 13 and 8. <laughs> and you know what? That's where the churches are today. The ministers, the heads of denominations stopped this man and his ministry showing that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, and the resurrection is on now. Amen. They blow it. This is not William Branham Pentecost. <laughs> I was in Pentecost for years quoting Hebrews 13 and 8, and I couldn't even get a bellyache cured. Let's face it. When this man preaches and he talks, you better know who he is, 
and what he can do and what his ministry is. And he isn't going to waver from it. No way. <clears throat> you and I will. We just shoot our mouths off. But we don't have to anymore because it's been vindicated and proven. We got, perfect, we got the perfect faith. All right. How can I deny the Bible being the truth? He's the same yesterday and forever. Easy. <clears throat> Never happens. Like the Muslim told Paris Reed, we, got, we can produce as much psychology as you can. Because <laughs> I hear your Jesus raised the dead, was raised from the dead. And the, and the apostles on the day of Pentecost we're full of the Holy Ghost and went about raising the dead and healing the sick. Now, what about you, Dr. Reedhead? <laughs> I think that's supposed to have happened, something like that anyway. It didn't happen to him, it sure happened to somebody else. <clears throat> now, seeing the hour that we're living in, seeing the hour that we're living in, what hour? <clears throat> there again, Brother Branagh said concerning Ephesians 1.17, the spirit, spirit of revelation and wisdom comes into the church to let you know the hour in which you're living. <clears throat> so, all right. Now, how do we know what hour? Because the man who has been vindicated tells us. Now, if you don't believe in vindication, that's all right. Just go on your way. You, you, never, you haven't got anything and never will have anything. See, it's just, it's just too bad, but you talk about Hebrews 13 and 8, and you quote, you're just, plumb, you're just a, a bare-faced liar. You're just quoting to hear yourself quote. <clears throat> but you're going to quote yourself into hell and condemnation. Now, you see, we know sitting here, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, because positively it's been vindicated to us that if this Jesus rose from the dead, and he's here in the flesh. He will categorically do exactly what he did when he was here on earth, when he was in flesh with Israel, and shown in chapters 4 and 12 of the book of Matthew, he must appear amongst the Gentiles. Now, they don't even believe that. But it's true because it's vindicated. Amen. Now, I say those lights are going to go. So, well, I'd well, well, no. And the lights go out. Well, what are you going to do about that? How are you going to deny <clears throat> the complete uh, interpretation of Matthew 4 and Matthew 12 when it's vindicated before your eyes because anybody knows that he cried in the streets. He rebuked people. He raised his voice. He smacked down the religion of the Jews. But this time he doesn't raise his voice. He doesn't go in the streets. He doesn't fuss and he doesn't fight. And he restores now, when's he going to do it? Oh, Brother Bale, he'll do so and so. Oh, will he? You prove it. Big mouth. Boy, you better not advertise unless you've got the goods. If you can't knock Tyson out, you better keep your cotton pig and mouth from flapping, or he'll close it for you. It'll be just like the guy that Freddie Saltman tells about back up in Kennedy. <clears throat> They're at a dance hall. <clears throat> and one guy come in and he slapped this kid across it as a froze cot, which is a frozen cat. And this young fella, he blubbering around this husky Ukrainian got up and he's, who are hit on my brother with a froze cot? And a great big guy, about seven foot four, big as moose, said, I'm going to hit your brother, met a froze cot. Boy, he sure you hit him a good one, didn't you? That's what you are, too. You get a guy bigger, he'll shut your mouth. But the people that came against him have the same spirit of hell and the devil that stood against Almighty God in the day of worship with Michael and said, I'm against you, O God, and I'll tell you, I'm going to rise above you. Now you say, now just a minute, I, I don't believe people do that. Well, you don't believe your Bible. I've been preaching and telling you, they have both seen and hated both me and my father. And you give in to a little wimpy, oh God, I love God, oh God, I love God. And my Bible says they hate God. You're going around and tell me that they love God? Come on. 
You need a catharsis in your head if that's the way you are. Look, for God's sake, if you can't live it and you really don't believe it, at least stand with it. If he said it, he said it. When a brother Bell, I don't really understand. I think there's wrong ramification there. And bless God, there could be a will for nice, nice guys, but you know how it is. I know exactly how it is. When he healed the sick, they said it's the devil. And he said, You hate me and my father. Come on, nice people, be sweet. Go on home. Huh? That's the whole thing. <clears throat> Seeing the hour we're living in, we didn't Easter in the church, which is resurrection. We need a resurrection of the power of faith. Men and women to stand out for that which is God's vindicated word. Now, he tells you right there exactly <clears throat> that if you've got a real resurrection of the power of faith, <clears throat> you are a man and a woman that stands with the vindicated word, well, what about it? Do I have to read it again? See, <clears throat> always principle evades the people. That's why you've got those people around about who can't stand my preaching because they made this a doctrine, not the person. William Branham's ministers to declare that he is here, then that is his ministry. Amen. That is the message. <clears throat> now, what's he here for? At this point, he's telling one of the reasons he's here is to raise the dead, <clears throat> to bring about an Easter, to bring about a resurrection. Now he's talking about us being a part of the resurrection and God seeing us in Christ who is that resurrection? And he said, we need a resurrection to the power of faith. And right there he is now talking of the passive, not the active. <clears throat> the active was what William Branham did through vindication by the power of Almighty God to establish the truth of what he is saying, which is doctrine. Now he says right here, we need men and women to stand out for <clears throat> that which is God's vindicated word. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take you back to paragraph 114 on page 22. How many Presbyterians, how many Methodists, how many Baptists in the world today, how many Pentecostals that know the truth and are afraid to make a stand on it? <clears throat> I'm persuaded to wonder what was it that fell on you? Are you a part of the resurrection? Would you dare scream off for some man-fearing idea? Or have you got the real fullness and real manhood that it takes to stand out and call right from wrong? Now, let's just find the book of Revelation. Now, have you got your Bibles? Turn to me to the book of Revelation, <clears throat> and I'll find it for you. And it says over here in chapter 21, in verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful... The first people mentioned going to the lake of fire are the fearful. <clears throat> and Brother Branham tells you who those fearful people are. They're afraid to stand with the word. And unbelieving. And you could put that as a preposition, even the unbelieving. <clears throat> even the abominable. Even murderers. Even whoremongers. Even sorcerers. Even idolaters. Even all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burns with brimstone, which is the second death. And Brother Branham said, we're standing before the white throne, and who gets condemned first? The fearful. <clears throat> what are they afraid of? They're afraid of their church. They're afraid of their pension. They're afraid of this. They're afraid of that. Ha! Brother, sister. Oh, <clears throat> let's go over here and look what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy. <clears throat> and it's the first chapter, and I think it's the seventh verse. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power 
and of love and a sound mind. Be thou therefore not ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. What testimony of the Lord? This kid never met the Lord. <clears throat> He's, don't be afraid of God testifying to me, his prisoner. Take your stand with me, kid. When the cry went out, who is on the Lord's side? you think they lined up with Moses and Joshua down with somebody else? When you're on the Lord's side, you're on the side of the prophet, right? <clears throat> oh, my, how this word dovetails so beautifully. 119, well, say they say we're having the youth for Christ. We say, That's all right. We're having a church meeting. We want to have so many members. Great, nothing against that. That's all right. <clears throat> but that's only the atmosphere. <clears throat> now, the atmosphere is not the reality. What does he mean by atmosphere? The atmosphere is what you lay out there in order to get something that you want. Right? Come on, God wants cactus. The atmosphere is dry. <clears throat> Maybe God wants mildew. It's going to be where it's wet and dark. So you've got an atmosphere. So what are you bringing the youth to Christ for? What are you bringing the people to church for? What are you doing this for? You're creating something to an end. You're making an atmosphere. So let's keep reading. It's only an atmosphere. That might be an old hen's feathers. But if you'll get in the right atmosphere there, you'll hatch eagle if you're eagle egg. <clears throat> in other words, now you can have all the youth for Christ you want. You can have all this and that you want. You have a drive for members, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You're setting an atmosphere just as though there's something real going to take place. But what if you ain't got no eagle eggs? <clears throat> If you are foreordained of God to see it, you can't help from seeing it. You are coming forth in a resurrection. Now, what's he saying here? He's telling you you can't help but see this great message, this great vindicated truth. You can't see this great plan of God <clears throat> except you're vindicated, you're ordained, foreordained. And if you're foreordained, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You are coming forth in the resurrection because the rest aren't. <clears throat> see? They're all trying to create an atmosphere. So did William Branham. But the atmosphere he created was the manifested power of God preceding the word, thus said the Lord, giving him every right to say, I am the revealer of truth. I'm Elijah for this hour. And he turned around and said, Elijah, this hour is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, not man, but God coming by a prophet. <clears throat> all right. So therefore, creating the atmosphere in order for the people to come out of Babylon and to come forth with God. So already we're having a coming out. <clears throat> we're coming out into resurrection. So the first step of the resurrection, we got number one, the manifestation that God gives us via the prophet, number two, coming out of organization, and number three, now we're standing in the resurrection because here we got the message. <clears throat> All right. Now, and how many believe in foreordination? You know, you realize that by the time Brother Branham went off the scene that most people did not believe in predestination. A lot of them don't believe even now. They don't have a clue. Here, prophets say, God, how many please there have been how many times he bat his eyeballs, how many take and make a pound of tallow. And they say, well, you know, these go pass right on. Hey, listen, stupid, you hit that landmine, you're going to go blowing higher in a kite. Boom, boom, boom. Get blown higher in a kite, well. Why didn't you tell me? You know what? On Judgment Day, if I'm right, you guys should be sitting there 100% secure. And if you're sitting here just smarting off and I'm right, you ain't got prayer. And I'm not saying, hey, I believe this like Brother Branham. I never kidded you people. All I know is this, if this isn't right, to the best of my understanding and ability and my emotions and everything about me, if this isn't right, God in heaven, what is right? <clears throat> 
So whatever degree I've got, that's not going to alter anything. Like Brother Branham said, Lot, uh, 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 Abraham was a silver dollar, and Lot might have been a ten-cent piece or a nickel or a copper coin. What's the difference? He's part of it. <clears throat> Don't tell me for one minute the little old lady with two, three tapes of washerman would know as much as a person really digging in with the two, three hundred tapes, but she's just as much a part of the resurrection as he is. So it's not a matter of saying, well, hey, I subscribed to this thing in the highest order, and boy, you couldn't, you couldn't beat it out and beat it. I mean, I got this and I got that. Hey, I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in one thing. It, do you, it, to the best of your ability, are you stuck with this? <laughs> See, that's all. Is this, are you looking someplace else? Are you reading somebody else's literature? Are you getting somebody else's tapes and things? Now, I don't mean mine. Now, you can get all you want. Just one thing. Don't ever come to me and ask a question when anybody else says. Or I'll boot you right out that door. At least I'll try to because I've warned you so many times, because I can't take care of what other people think. <clears throat> I don't know if other preachers think like me. If they, if they say to do, I take their word for it. And I don't know if I think like other preachers, because I don't listen to anybody. So you say, well, Brother Vade, you're kind of uh, an egotistical. Well, you can call it that if you want. I don't care what you call it. I just don't bother. If you want to know the real truth, I'm too blasted lazy. That's right. I'd sooner have my thoughts going someplace else. First, I don't much care what anybody else teaches. I care what this is here. I hope I'm getting it right. <clears throat> if you're foreordained to God to see it, you can't help from seeing it. There's no way. In other words, you've got no blind spots in your eye. You're coming, you are coming forth in a resurrection. In other words, you are actually doing it now. <clears throat> 120. That's the way the Baptist is born. Now watch that present tense, don't let it fool you. That's the way the Methodist is born in the resurrection of that day, but they turned off to be a head instead of an eagle. Now he's talking about the denomination. <clears throat> Every time there was a move of God, the eagles came forth. And they had the eagle food. And then pretty soon the air began to creep in, the creeds and the dogmas. And now you don't have eagles, you have a chicken pen, but fortunately there's a few eagle eggs appearing all the way along. <clears throat> and they're the ones that always listen because their predestination being eagles, see? Now today they don't have the spirit-filled original word. That's what's wrong with the foolish virgins when they came. <clears throat> there was no oil in their lamps. Now, what did Brother Branham say the, the conduit of the Holy Spirit was? It was the Word. So, therefore, the oil had leaked out of the Word. <clears throat> it was dead. It was dry. It was gone. <clears throat> well, he said, now give us some of yours. There's no way. You've got to go and get your own. All right, now, page, uh, oh, 24. I was going to go too fast. Now, I can read quite fast here. As I said a long time ago, going down from Tucson, that'd be to uh, Phoenix, I watched a very strange thing. I saw a hawk sitting on a wire down there. That hawk has long since lost, has long ago lost his identification. It used to be a bird next to the eagle. It could not follow an eagle. No, by no means. Nothing can follow an eagle, but he was a hawk. Christ is the eagle, and the church should be at least a hawk. They can fly higher than any of the rest of the birds, but the hawk had become soft. It's lost its identification. It sits on the telephone wire and waits for some dead rabbit. He hops like a vulture instead of a flying like a hawk. Now, in other words, he's telling you here that any church that's worth the name of a church should at least be a hawk going out to get fresh food, being active, making a fresh kill. In other words, he's going through the motions, going there because he knows there's something there. <clears throat> but the hawk that Brother Branham now talks about doesn't know anything is out there. He just looks down and, and eats the old dead carrion. <clears throat> he hops like a vulture. No, but that hawk became soft, lost in indication, sits on telephone wires, waits for some dead rabbit. It hops like a vulture instead of flying like a hawk. Now, you've seen the hawks, you've seen vultures hop, which is true. No, my brother, sister, you Pentecostal people, which is my own dear people. Now, watch that phrase and keep it in mind. The church is losing its identification. So he says, Pentecost, you're losing yours. It's coming down and depending on some dead formal creed instead of flying in the heavens, hunting for a fresh man. See, that's what I told you. That's what he said. Now, remember, it's not a hawk. It's a, if not a bride. It's not an eagle. It's a hawk. <clears throat> it's slowed down. First of all, got to like be an old fat eagle. And it got like an old fat hawk. And it got like a lazy hawk. 
123, a hawk used to hunt his own manna, but today he takes what the automobiles run over, what the vultures eat. He hops like one, he looks like one. In other words, the, the, the two vines are together, and the, and the church is more, more than a lodge than it is even a church. So it's gone down, 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 down. We've adorned ourselves in the modern world. Our women are cutting their hair, wearing shorts, men without enough backbone to stand the pulpit and tell the truth. We've long got soft to the world. Now he's telling you what the conditions like dressing off. Oh, God, send the Holy Ghost and look out those eagles. Now spot them out somewhere that's ready to stand now, no matter what takes place, that'll soar into the unknown. That is doctrine that they don't know now. Not sit on a telephone wire and look for some Sunday school literature to come in. In other words, that's the highest they're ever going to get across on off the ground. <clears throat> and the only place they get a little bit of life is when the power's running through the lines. And because their both feet are on one line, they can't make the juice work. And so it just goes by. They don't know what's going on. You know, they're shot in both, both feet. would either make them go in the air or kill them dead. And that's what it does. Takes you in the rapture, kills you. That's right, exactly. <clears throat> now, he said... <clears throat> Let me have the word, and it's precious, at, at, and it is precious in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Now he is not talking about signs following the word, even though he knows they are there. He says they are there. He commends them because what else can he do? But he's been talking all along about vindication, and vindication is not signs that follow the word. Signs that follow the word merely prove the word that is correct. It's there. <clears throat> but you want something before the word, then that you vindicate the man that's going to tell you some truth. We need an Easter. We need a resurrection that's potential, full of power. My friend, if you're satisfied with such carrion of the world, there's something wrong. See? <clears throat> my sister and my brother, let me say to you this in godly fear, knowing I may never live to see an Easter again. That's right, he didn't. There's one thing sure. When a genuine foreordained son of God by the Word of God, that means the preaching of the Word, here's the voice of God. <clears throat> now remember, that's Matthew, that's Hebrews 12 again now, approach, approaching Mount Zion. He'll rise and go to meet us. <clears throat> now why does he say go to meet us? Who's on the Lord's side? Who do you think for one minute cried to the church, behold the bridegroom, come out and meet him? <clears throat> Who are you going to consort with him? Brother Brown talked about the man without a wedding garment sitting there amongst the, the wedding guests. He said, that's us, and somebody comes in and doesn't believe. So he's not trying to start a denomination. He is telling you, as the one ordained of God to stand before the bride in this hour, which will be the resurrection and the catching away, starting with a vindicated message, you come over to my side. <clears throat> They knowing full well, the scripture distinctly says, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receives me, and he that receives me receives the Father that sent me. All right, when a genuine foreordained son of God by the word of God hears the voice of God, or do we say when a genuine foreordained son of God hears the voice of God, which comes by the word of God, and that word, remember, is vindicated, he'll rise <clears throat> and go to meet us. In other words, come out of here, my people. The prophet doesn't go in there and knock them on the head and pull them out. There's a difference. <clears throat> in other words, I said the other day, I remember sort of coercing a guy. Worst stupid thing he ever did. Just like people in church trying to make confrontations, coercion. Get political minded. Why don't you get heavenly minded for once? You can judge anything by the word today. If it's off the word, conduct anything else, there it is. Biggest, larger than life. <clears throat> Never was a day we lived in like this. Now he said, if the, it's the potentials that he's going to meet the real living word. What's he talking about now? The Rima Logos, the incarnation. He's going to hit the rapture. <clears throat> As he was, the bride will meet the groom. She's part of his body. Now it tells you right there. If you're a part of this, you're not going to stick around back in Babylon. You're going to come on out. <clears throat> you see, based on the presence, vindicated word, proving the resurrection, it's high time to come out. Now, let's face it. Anybody's got ears to hear, but only casually. Ears to hear is where you really hear. Notice long, notice long have we, 
Now we're losing our identification. <clears throat> See? Now he's talking about the hawk and the eagle. We come on Wednesday night, some of us, not all of us, most stay home, and they want to watch I Love Lucy. Television, all that worldly kind of thing, all kinds of entertainment to keep you away from church. Long have we lost it. In other words, right now, <clears throat> even the desire is actually very, very poor when you consider over here, I think it's in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, where Paul is speaking to the people, and he says, uh, let us draw near with verse 22, with a true heart in full assurance of faith. That's this hour. Having our hearts spring from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he's faithful that promised. He proved it. And let us consider one another uh, to provoke one another, to excite unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approach. <clears throat> exhorting what? To come together for the word. Now he said, people sooner stay home. You know what they're doing? They're relaxing. Well, you know something? <clears throat> the relaxing comes under the seventh seal, and you can't get the seventh seal watching television or reading anything else but the thunders, the message which is this hour. Now, you can have a lot of unrest in your soul, but you're never going to get this thing right unless you come the way God ordained. 128, our seminaries, our schools are putting out a bunch of rickies and a whole lot of theology, entertainment, and everything in the church to take the place of prayer meetings. <clears throat> That's true. Now, he starts addressing the Pentecostals, and at the same time, he's making you and me aware of these things because we're, there's going to be a lot of second and third generation people amongst us. Now, 129, we took dress and tried to fulfill what the modernists tried to do and bring them in. In other words, <clears throat> We were just as goofy as the Amish who thinks that they're different dress. They've discovered God and they've got God because they've got this different dress from everybody else. Now, the screwball Pentecostals and the rest of them, they take the dress of the world and think, now we're, we're, we'll just get these guys in. We'll be nice the way they are. And, of course, then they'll come in with us. See, the army say they're going to look at us and say, now, these people are different. One well, makes them tick that way. I'm going to find out. And when the army, you get the army, they, they sell you a bill of crap, a bill of goods. And, and if you're a fool, you go with them. They caught you by their dress. Their words as phony as a $3 bill. Now, the other people, they take their clothes off and what have you to look like the world. And they say, well, come on, talk with us. And they say, well, I think I like these guys. They look like us. They act like us. Maybe they got something. So now you got them all messed up. Ain't nothing but the vindicated word. Come on. There's nobody proves he's the same yesterday day and day and forever except the vindicated prophet. You say, well, I had this healing. I did this. So what? I can give you books written right today <clears throat> and make Pentecostal's hair stand on end. And the guy doesn't claim anything but a gift from God, and he doesn't know where it came from, and he doesn't know the first thing about Jesus Christ, and he talks about spirit and spirits, maybe. Can't remember the whole book, but I read about this guy. You just have to phone him up, and you get the most marvelous healing going. <laughs> Who needs this? You see what I'm saying? Vindication, brother, sister, is the only hope you've got, period. Huh? Can you say, can you say anything else you want to say? But that's how you do your mathematics. That's why you've got computers. And then you want to flub the dub on this? Well, you've got, you've got to have a lot of, well, the, all your screws are loose. Well, we've got heads just like a cement mixer. You ever hear them as they come to pour the cement in your yard? Clunkety, clunkety, chunkety, 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 clunk. Hey, gravel head. That's a whole lot better manure head, I guess, but it comes ends up the same thing. <clears throat> God have pity. Here's a message to Laodicea. Rich, increased in goods, and don't lack a thing, but you're wretched, miserable, naked, and blind. He said, you've got, you, you've got more than of that. Than, they've got more than that than you have, so you can't win them by being worldly. You haven't got any business on their ground. Let them come over on yours where the real baptism is shining, where the real power, where there is the real power of the Holy Ghost. Now, that's a flat. That's certainly an off remark of the stupidest description you ever heard of. They don't have the real power of the resurrection. <clears throat> if they did, they'd believe the message. 
They believe the word. They got an anointing. And yet at the same time, that is a part of the resurrection because it's what God said would take place and God's doing it. I contend that that's where God fools the people, deceives them. See, now Brother Brown was saying to you and me, let them come over on our side. See, the, where the abstract has been absolutely proven, there's nothing on the deed. <clears throat> the same one that went down to his son and daughter in the Garden of Eden has come down at the end time to finish the job. I'm going to tell you flat and you know it. If God Almighty stopped them going to the tree of life, it's going to take God Almighty to come down and invite him back to it. Why? Help us to make up. <clears throat> come on. 1.30. Don't try to build a church like theirs. Don't try to have a pastor like that. Don't try to do this, that, the other, cooperate with the world. They shine with Hollywood. The real gospel glows. Power. Eagles hear that. They don't look for a shine. They look for a glow. In other words, life moving within and noticed. See? Glowing with humility, glowing with love, glowing with power. That's what the re real eagle hunts. You can't scratch in a barnyard and please him. He'll never be able to do it. He will never touch. It'll never touch him because he doesn't believe it. Let that voice scream from heaven. I am he that was dead and is alive again. Something has taken place. I'm the same yesterday, day, and forever. And it shall come to pass the last days. I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Now, you see, you've got to watch that statement that Pentecostals always get fooled by. But when you see that statement, pour upon all flesh, you know that all flesh means all flesh, your sons, your daughters, my sons, my daughters. <clears throat> Here's your big trick right there. You've got to watch it. The same one will come in that day being false prophets and the children of false prophets. We cast out devils. We did this. We did that. I never knew you. Depart from me. Now, listen. He says at this end time, He's talking about the book of Revelation because this is where he says it. <clears throat> what is it? Revelation 1 and 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And that's exactly what he saw. And then in verse 18, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And he's telling you right here at this time when he comes as a judge, when he comes as that one you see right there and that one you see right there, he said, this is the resurrection hour and I am he which was alive <clears throat> and um, was dead and alive forevermore. Amen. He said, this time when I am here, the proof of the resurrection will never cease. No more son of man. No more son of God. No more this. No more that. It's forever and ever. Why? Because I read it in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, what you're coming to. What more you want for a nickel? You tell me this Bible doesn't add up the way Brother Brown preached it. It's absolutely flawless. It's flabbergasting. It's so marvelous. <clears throat> Glory to God. I'll quicken your mortal language, your <clears throat> mortal tongue. I'll give you heavenly. I'm going to bring you in the resurrection with me. Hungry, hearty eagles reach for that just as hard as they can. It's a pearl of great price that they uh, will sell everything else and go by. God help us, friends. Our churches are losing their identification. Now, in this paragraph, I can throw you plumb for loop <clears throat> because you think, well, there you are, Brother Branham is right back with the Pentecostals. No way. But remember, Brother Branham knew one thing, which everybody knows who teaches and does anything. You have to start with what they know to take them to what they don't know, and you must commend them with what they, for what they have, and don't take it from them, but take it on. So he lets them know they have this. There's nothing wrong with it. I would to God we had it here. I wish we did. It's exciting. It's marvelous. <clears throat> I really do. I'm going to tell you. I told you before, Brother Branham wanted me to go to Chicago. And he said, Lee, if they'll only take you, I'll go up there and we'll put the church in order to have the gifts of the Spirit. Because he knew I was interested. I loved I had a certain portion myself. <clears throat> but I didn't have as much as I thought I had. You don't need to have a lot of it. If Pentecost say, well, how would you all speak with tongues? And the Bible says, he that speaketh in tongues, let him interpret. So he said, therefore, if I speak in tongues, I'm obligated to interpret. Therefore, I've got two gifts already because God said so. Now the Bible said, now you speak in tongues, interpret. I would you, how sooner you prophesied. Well, hallelujah. I'd sooner prophesy. So now I got tongues, interpretation, and I got prophecy. And that's where they stop because anybody can yatter and yammer off. 
but put it under order and make it produce. It's a different story. <clears throat> To have a church that yells and jumps, fine, yell and jump. I'm not against it, but don't make a lot of noise when I'm teaching. Be respectful. But after me, you can scream and jump and dance. I won't mind that. I'll just dance out the back door and you dance in here. And <clears throat> I'm not against it. Just don't dance with each other and things that are stupid and crazy. I'm not against emotion. That we must be emotional. There's something wrong with it. But what about the emotion where the heart is so clicking to the Word of God? On the other hand, you get so most of your heart is not clicking to the Word of God. Where do you stand? Well, you dance in your own intellect. From when Brother Brown spoke of a genuine Pentecost, I'm with him 100%. All these things I believe in. But you cannot stop there and say, well, Brother Brown said it, so I'll ignore the rest. <clears throat> no way, shape, or form. Now he said here, God help us, friends, our churches are losing their identification. What's the identification of Pentecost? Speaking in tongues. Now, everybody's identified, and there's no church that doesn't believe it to a degree. Some people, some were. Pat Boone went Pentecostal, and of course, the Church of Christ kicked him out. <clears throat> the Catholic people knew Pentecostal. They're, they're the same way, the whole thing. Okay, listen, 131. Watch the action of those disciples. They knew that Jesus was the truth. They knew that Jesus was the truth. Absolutely, they knew that he was. I am the way, the truth, and light. Revelation 3, 14, at the end time. Thus saith the Amen, the God of truth. They knew Jesus was the truth, but what? But you see, it was against the popular idea, the popular religion of the hour, the strictest religion, Pharisees, Sadducees, so forth, Ku Klux Klan denomination. Boy, that was a stinger, wasn't it? wearing crazy things and acting like the devil. They, they were against that heresy. What heresy? About Jesus. <clears throat> but Jesus was, was the identified word, and Jesus is the Holy Ghost in spirit. Why? Because that's Romans 1 and 8. He's the Son of God according to the spirit of the resurrection, Son of man according to flesh. A little while in the world seeth me no more, but you'll see me. Not the body, the life that was in him. <clears throat> now, he's talking about the resurrection back there, and Alpha is Omega, and he's talking about the resurrection now, and he's saying Hebrews 13 and 8, he's the same yesterday day and forever. What he did then, he's got to do now. And there isn't any change. So what is it he said back there? He said, you see me now, but later you won't see me and yet you will see me. In other words, you'll see the absolute evidence that the same one in the flesh now in the form of the Holy Spirit is doing the same thing, so therefore it is the life. And that's what Brother Branham says right now. The Elijah of this hour is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. <clears throat> Not a man, a prophet comes by a man. Now, God poured that life upon the church to call sons like he did, like sons, and like he did then, the obedient, <clears throat> I'm just trying to figure this out kind of for you, that were obedient like Jesus, who said, I'll always do that which is pleasing to my Father, which of you can accuse me of sin? In other words, sin is unbelief. What has the Word said about me I haven't done? Now listen, what he's doing here is absolute showing two things vindication before his death and resurrection, which proved they had every right to believe upon him, and condemnation if they didn't. And now at the same thing at the end time. <clears throat> Just as at Pentecost, it furthered it. They went into a new phase. They were no longer fearful. They'd become more and more part of the resurrection. And they'd been becoming that for the last 2,000 years. And the Brother Branham said this applied to him also. Show me what word said that I did not do that I didn't do. In other words, tell me one thus saith the Lord never came to pass. Show me any scripture not fulfilled. Which of you can accuse me? Which of you can lay a finger on me and say I haven't fulfilled my father's word? How many times has he quoted uh, Samuel for saying, when did I take your money? When did I take anything? When did I not tell you the truth? <clears throat> tell me when I failed. And that's what he had to talk about Samuel because Samuel's mentioned in the third chapter of the book of Acts concerning Christ himself as that great prophet and beginning at Samuel. 
See? <clears throat> so you'll notice in there that Samuel didn't bring the word, but he was a revealer of it. Now, William Branham said the same thing about God in him doing that very thing. <clears throat> now, on page 2633, oh, when the Pentecostal church gets to that spot, who can accuse me of unbelief? Now, do you think the Pentecostal church that's a denomination gets to that spot? They've been condemned. <clears throat> the Pentecostal church is Acts 2, 37, 39, repent. Well, repent or what? Every single New Testament thought concerning a New Testament so-called church, drop it. Well, you say, Brother Vey, what about this business of baptism with the Holy Ghost? Well, you got to drop it because you believe the evidence is tongues. <clears throat> you got to start over again. What does it mean? Repent. What did the apostle do? And William Branham had to follow and teach us. He said, everything I ever learned, and believe me, I learned the law. I obeyed it properly, and don't tell me I didn't know these things. He said, that was strictly manure. God loves manure heads when they admit they're manure heads. But don't say you're a bird brain when you mean when you're only a chicken and you think you're an eagle. <clears throat> Always the wisdom of God is counted manure. Always the power of God is call, called an exercise in futility. Because the Bible says so. You've got to come to a complete repentance, which is a change of mind, not, not some little feeling that you had about Brother Branham. You get everything cleared out of your head that's contrary to God's word, period. That alone is repentance. It means change your mind. I'll be a million years old. People still won't believe me when I say the Bible says, <clears throat> Godly sorrow worketh repentance. So right away they say, there you are, godly sorrow is repentance. I see a hammer drives in nails. You understand that. It takes a hammer to do it. Well, there's no such thing as repentance unless you change your mind. And you're going to be so sorry that you're going to be happy to change your mind. <clears throat> And the more you get sorry about all the crud that you learned, the quicker you change your mind. And the more you change your mind, the more you find out, the more you need to change your mind, the quicker and more happy and the happier you are to change your mind. It's just like, boy, if you feel you're going to lose weight by, you know, weight by eating, eating good old oatmeal and a few things, you'll just guzzle that all day long. <clears throat> That's the way it is with the Word. If you want your mind really repented, you want the Holy Ghost really filling it, there's only one way. Just go to the Word and power word upon word. There's no other way you can do it. Now, Pentecostal church is Acts 2, 37, 39. And remember at that time, at that spot, Brother Branham says, oh, when the Pentecostal church gets at that spot, who can accuse me of unbelief? That's perfect faith. <clears throat> How can anybody tell Brother Branham's wrong? Because he stands back and, 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 and they criticize and say, well, that's not God. Well, let them do something that is God. Shooting your mouth off isn't necessarily God. No way, shape, and form. <clears throat> you want to get an idea that look at some marriages. A man gets up and he preaches to his wife and he preaches the biggest bunch of crud you ever heard in your life and wants her to obey it. She got no reason to believe a jerk and obey a jerk that takes, wants to take her off the word of God. Smarten up. But the man's going to respond to one judgment day for her if he leads you off. You bet he will. He'll burn a whole lot more than she will. <clears throat> the greater condemnation is always to them who knew more and wouldn't do it or those who, re, who wouldn't come when they could have come. Always there's something in there. You watch that. Scripture is full of it. I can't quite quote it this time, but I could find it. O oh, Christians, be identified not as a hawk, but as an eagle. In other words, don't, don't stick with your church creeds and dogmas. <clears throat> now, if you're going to identify as an eagle and not as a hawk, you're going to have to identify with the eagle that screamed. The one from heaven that screamed. Well, how do you know it's that one? Thus saith the Lord. There's vindication. <clears throat> get lined up. 
I know I preach this until maybe your head swims in the world. They say, why don't you go on to something else? Then you tell me why the prophet didn't go on to something else. Huh. I ought to lower your temperature a little bit. Get you where you belong. <clears throat> See? This, it, the, the hawk is soft. It'll come down. It'll shy away from this. It'll shy away from revelation. It'll come down off the, off the wire. He doesn't have to soar anymore. He doesn't have to look around. He sits on the wire and finds a dead rabbit. Come on down. <clears throat> you know, like the price is right. Come on down. <clears throat> He'll take anything that some television hawker gives him, some crazy church preacher. It'll come down. You'll never see an eagle doing that. No, he'll never do that. He hunts his own food out of the blue. God has prepared him so that he can see it. He gets fresh manna, not something that's dead. In other words, where one person sees the creeds and dogmas and says, I can't change that. The other guy says, hallelujah. That rings a bell. <clears throat> yes, sir. -y. Now, concerning the Hebrews, when they crossed the wilderness, they tried to eat dead manna, became stagnant, the wicked tails in it. You know what we mean? It's contaminated, rotten maggots in it. Now, Brother Branham used that as his basis for teaching there's a new message, there's new food for every age. And when the life goes out of the food, it's got to go out at a certain period of time because it's only meant for that period of time. And the Bible distinctly says that, <clears throat> that the life is in the Word <clears throat> until there's no necessity for it. And Brother Branham brought that up very clearly. No word of God is void of power until it's passed away. In other words, its, it's, it's, it's age is gone. <clears throat> so people say, well, I believe this Bible, hallelujah. And they look at every single thing and they go, hey, well, that's what Awal Frank did. Brother Branham made 37 mistakes, he said, and he's quoting over here in Zechariah, quoting here and quoting there. Brother Branham never came for the entire Bible. He came for bride in this hour. <clears throat> when she was corrected, she had the perfect revelation for the hour, and it was a complete revelation because it took her right back to the Apostle Paul and show me where the Apostle Paul said all the stuff that these guys want Brother Branham to say. Hey, this is for the Gentiles. Brother Branham wasn't called for the Jews. Oh, God have pity. You know, you're never going to get out of here alive, brother. Look at you're never going to make the rapture until you just grieve, believe the prophet said. <clears throat> See? Well, the life kept coming on and on and on, and the, and, the, and the old stuff fell away, 136. Why would I eat a food that's been dead years ago? It might be in form and shape, but it isn't fresh. We've got to get food every generation new. So does the eagle look for that food <clears throat> every generation as we're in a journey. Why? Because every single generation has souls in it. And when the message comes on the scene, they, they, the first group of people take it and they get what they need. But there's a portion that keeps living until the new message comes. And the next generation gets it. And next. And you'll see how it is that if you, let, you watch carefully, especially in the age of the face of the man under the old Puritans, and you'll see those students came up in that word, and every minister is richer and richer, and, and their teaching is so fabulous and marvelous, it ended with a guy like Kenyon who could say in one sentence about a whole chapter. And now you've got a bunch of fundamental jackasses trying to say that Kenyon was new age. Oh, you talk about these bunch of stinking prostitute fundamentalists. Now they're going to have the little microchip under your skin as the number in the hand. Yeah. Well, they got all figured out. Phew, talk about sick. Talk about a vindicated prophet. They sneer at you. But we love Jesus. Now get it flat. Who loves who? Come on. Give her this sniveling, snotty, dribbling stuff called love. I'm not saying love can't be sentimental amongst yourselves and sweet, broken down and all. But you can say all you want about your love. The Holy Ghost conduit is the word. And the love of God can only be shed or brought in your heart by the Holy Ghost whose conduit is the word. Now you can have any love you want. It's going to be good as a counterfeit. But if you want the real love of God, there's only one way you're going to get it. You're going to get it by what's in that word because you are what you are.
Yeah. Why do men die? Why have they died? They've always died for a word. They die for a form of government. <clears throat> they emulate themselves like they do over there right now in, in, in South Korea, North Korean places. Do it in China, India. Set themselves on fire. Why? Because they have discovered what they feel is a principle, and there's no principle unless it's enunciated by words. What good does it do to burn your body? Doesn't prove you got love. You'd be nutting a fruitcake. If you're a real child of God, you won't burn your body, but they'll burn it for you. People are so mixed up, it's pitiful. Brother Branham said, the whole world's insane. Then what are we worried about? What are we trying to say? <clears throat> are we going to convert the insane? If you can convert the insane, then Jesus would make everybody that's born again go to the insane institutions and ordain them all as preachers. <laughs> I think they've done a pretty good job along that line already. <clears throat> right, how many minutes we got? Well, it's just right to quit because... Brother Branham is going to talk from now on about people of the Old Testament. All right. <clears throat> we did all right. We got uh, about two pages done. Yes. When we read rapidly from now on, we'll be able to, because we'll be illustrating. Here we're getting, we get to the body because we have to positively see who this man is and what he's saying and where he's saying it. And it's got to line in continuity with the message. You simply can't take this message and then one over here and say, now, ha, ha, this is he said here, and this he said here, and they're different. No, no, no. <clears throat> no way, it's just like with the point of view when you're looking at a house. The house has got four sides, east, west, north, south, usually, although it could be at an angle. Now, the north side of the house, when you describe it, you must tell the people I'm on the north side. And when you go to the west side, you say, I have progressed to the west side. Because if they don't know the point of view, they'll never be able to describe the house. They'll be mixed up, and you'll accomplish nothing. So don't try to figure any sermon of Brother Branham's unless you know the subject, the point of view, and what he has in mind in continuity. And the great masterpieces are the principle, Alpha and Omega, Parallelism of Scripture and things like that. Especially those two. If you got those, you got them down pat. There's nothing else you need to know. Let's rise and be dismissed. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for your answered prayer that you certainly have helped us, we believe. And looking at this word of life that the prophet made to a mixed people, not saying they do not have anything, not taking away what they got, but addressing them, knowing that there are various people there, and both are there for one reason, Although they, some might be there for the reason they know not of, it's a reason entirely different from the reality. And yet, who can say they weren't looking for reality? But Lord, if they were there looking for reality according to their own in, in, uh, uh, specifications and their own understanding and saying anything else is not going to obtain, we know, Lord, they couldn't be eagles hunting in the blue. They're sitting on the wire looking for that which has been dead for a long time, not understanding the Word of God but are living on an experience and, and hoping that vitality lies within the emotion, which, Lord, we know it's true in a certain way because a corpse is not emotional. You can jump on him, kick on him burning, and he doesn't say anything. So, Lord, we realize in that meeting as Brother Branham priesthood, we know that as the messenger which he is, he had to stay 100% with what his ordination was or he let you down. And we know, Lord, the man did not let you down, but we are in danger, Father, of letting him down and you down by not understanding. But we can call on you tonight, Father, without fear, and we know without fear if we are children of yours for ordained, we are going to hear this message, and by your grace we're going to understand what we have need of, and it is going to be in our lives until our very lives are transfigured, by the life in this word, which Paul himself said was a ministry. He said, we have this ministry. And unless the God of this world has blinded the eyes of the people that hear that gospel, absolutely the end would be there according to truth, right to the new Jerusalem, as Paul mentions right there in Hebrews 12. 
John carries on and all the rest. So, Father, we know, again, we're not trying to impress anybody or impress you, Lord, that we have a great revelation beyond anybody or we have something within us greater than anybody else's. We have a zeal greater. We have something that's so steadfast and solid and sound as though we, we just, oh, we're great prophets from the Lord. We're not. Father God, we're just here with your word tonight. And we know we're not satisfied, but we can say with the woman that Brother Branham liked to talk about so much when, when she said, there's one thing I certainly do know, that I'm not what I, I want to be, and I'm not what I ought to be, but uh, I know, and not what I'm going to be, but one thing I sure know, I'm not what I used to be. And I don't believe for one minute, Lord, that if we have this word, which we never had before, and we believe it and want more and more of it to see it line up and, and just desperately biting our tongues as it were and holding on to ourselves, itching and waiting in almost a despair for that word to come alive within us and put us over in the yonder Lord in the resurrection. And Father, that's all we can do is just do what we're doing. Bless us therefore. And again, we thank you for the sweet spirit of Christ that's amongst us. And if we don't recognize it for that tremendous sweetness, we know it's our own fault. We begin to recognize, Lord, and lay it with you. We know that all our sins were laid upon you when you were here in the flesh, and now you've risen to give us the results of that new test in which part of its healing. So we thank you, Lord, for that sweet spirit amongst us that heals the sick, heals our wounded minds, heals our wounded hearts, goes right to where your apostle John said, I wish above all else that you may uh, be in health and prosper even as your soul prospers. Lord, wherever marriages are having problems, we know that you can and will heal them, Lord, as people just turn to you now with your word. There's nothing too hard, Father. There's nothing that can't be given. Nothing can't be broken, put out of the way. There's no heart, Lord, that's broken over death or this and that. They cannot be healed and look to you, Lord, find the greatest consolation. There is nothing, Lord, there's no job that can't be got. We know, Heavenly Father, that you put too many things in your word there. And with the sweet spirit of Christ, Lord, where a prophet was sent who could scan the heavens, the earth, and look over heaven and earth and search the eternal bounds thereof and come up and know where a man's soul had gone. How much more, Lord, that same spirit is still amongst us that can search out for the people the good things that they have need. Lead, guide, and protect us. Surely, Lord, there is no room for doubt. There is no lack of faith. Help us to see that, Lord. Clear away any cobwebs and those things, O oh God, which remain. Cleanse us by the blood, put us in the position. We give thee all the glory, Lord, because we know nothing is of us. It's got to be all of you. Under the King, eternal, immortal, and visible, the only wise God, be all power, honor, and glory through Christ our blessed Savior. Amen. Take the name of Jesus.